Hello YouTube, Miss Infinite here. This will be the first video that I'll be posting online and I wanted to talk about my bug out bag. So let's get started. So originally when I was putting together my bug out bag, I was going to go with this bag. Now as you can see, it's the um, ACU camouflage uh, bag and it's, <laughs> it's not a very good bag. It's got these two pockets on the front, which I mean they're they're a decent size, and then the big pocket um, for the central part of the pack. It was a cheap bag. It was under I think forty dollars. It could have been even under thirty. Uh, I got it on Amazon.com when I was traveling to the states. So I got it shipped to me for free. Um, it's just really a cheap bag. I mean it, it's fine for the price, but it's really not nearly uh, the quality of my Gregory bag. Um, the other thing about this bag that originally I was a like, guess I wanted it to be the ACU blah 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 but then I I thought about it a little more and realized that I don't actually want to stand out as someone who looks like they have things that someone else might want or could be perceived as a threat. So that's originally why I decided to go with the Gregory bag. So the bag that you see here is the Gregory Jade 28. Uh, so it's a 28 liter pack. It's originally designed to just be a day pack, uh, potentially overnight. It doesn't have a lot of room and it's not the pack that I would like to be using ideally. Um, ideally what I'd want is the Gregory Diva. Um, I'm still humming and hawing about whether I want the 60 liter or the 70 liter. I think I'm going to have to uh, basically get both, bring them home, stuff them full, see which one I like better, and then return the other one. Um, just so that I have an idea of what I can fit in there and room and stuff like that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about the fact that I have the rain cover on it. Now the reason that I have the rain cover on it is not because it's raining outside, but because this prevents the bag from getting caught on things if you're walking through the bush. So all the straps you, you have on a bag, those can get caught on things. By having the, the rain cover on, it prevents things um, from getting caught. It can also hide or conceal any items that you have on the outside of your bag that could kind of give you away as being someone who's prepared. So let's take this off and talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so here's the bag without the rain cover on. I'll just kind of give you guys a quick view of what the outside does look like. Um, I really like this pack. It's a very, very good quality pack. Gregory has very good quality products, comes with a lifetime warranty. This thing is basically bomb proof. It's a fantastic bag um, and I really do enjoy it. I would just like a bigger one for the bug out bag purpose. Um, here I have my survival knife and my Leatherman. Now, in a bug out scenario, I would not want to be wearing this. It's big, it's noticeable, it can come across as threatening. Um, the Leatherman I could probably get away with and no one would really pay it any mind. Um, so until I got out of the city or into a more secluded area, this would stay hidden with the bag underneath the rain cover. Uh, now this is a pretty hefty, no messing around survival knife. It's carbon steel with a very, very, very thick spine on it. It is the Schrade brand, as you can see there, and it is the SCHF9. Um, so like I said, carbon steel, so you are going to be required to oil it and have a little bit more preventative maintenance uh, to take care of it. The blade, uh, sorry, the handle is rubberized. It's very, very grippy, very good. Um, it's ergonomical. It's comfortable in the hand. It has a very good balance point right about right there. If I can get it go. Um, so it balances pretty well. You don't it it acts like a much smaller knife because it's so well balanced. Um, because the spine is so thick on this thing, you can baton wood like nobody's business. Um, it is a fantastic knife. It is a big knife. I mean, when you look at the size of my hand compared to this thing, it, it is big. Uh, but I I do like it, and it's very very durable and I'm I'm happy with this purchase. Uh, this was from Amazon.ca. Uh, I think it was under fifty dollars so for the kind of knife it is I I thought that was a great deal. 
this um, accessory pouch is attached via via Molly to the main sheath with that the, the knife came with. Um, in here I have my little Altoids survival tin um, which I've done a separate video on so you can go check that out if you want to know what's in it and then just in this little elastic portion I have a little knife so this is a little CRKT knife I believe it's the MK5 yeah it's the RSK MK5 great little knife the reason that I have this is to supplement processing small game um, when using my big shroud is just not really that practical um, so whether it's uh, debreasting game birds or um, skinning squirrels or rabbits or anything like that this is a lot easier to handle than the big one uh, it does come with this lanyard on it this little nub thing right here is designed to line up with your pinky and basically extend the handle uh, if you will of the knife so it's a little bit more maneuverable that way instead of just trying to use it with these two fingers so that's a nice feature uh, stainless steel blade um, you can paracord wrap the handle I specifically haven't um, because its main purpose in my mind is for game processing and uh, I've had other knives where I've had a paracord wrapped handle where when they get soaked in in blood they can start to go a little bit rancid so by not having that paracord there I'm trying to avoid that so that's the knife and this is just my Leatherman Wave uh, very popular multi-tool I got it in the black finish uh, anybody who owns one of these will tell you that that black finish will wear off I'm not too concerned about it it was the same price as the silver one when I bought it I it looked cooler <laughs> honestly and the matte finish can actually help um, reduce the amount of reflection from the tool potentially giving away your position so those are the tools so this would be on my belt and this would be on my belt once it became practical for it to be there um, and until such a point it would be attached to the backpack okay. so let's start taking a look on what's on the outside of the pack okay so as you can see on the outside pouch right here in this little mesh water bottle water bottle pouch I have four chem lights these are just your typical um, 12 hour green chem lights nothing particularly special and then the other thing that I have in this pocket is uh, just this little green LED angle head flashlight it's modeled after those big uh, army issue ones the big d-cell batteries I've worked with those things before they're absolutely awful um, in order to change the filter and thus the color of the light you had to unscrew this portion put the filter on and then screw this portion back on and all of your filters are kept in this part. Uh, extremely easy to drop them, lose them when you're in the field. Um, so I really, really like this one. I got it from eBay. So I don't know what the exact lumens on this thing are. It is a very, very decent beam. But what I like most about it is uh, by turning this little wheel, let's see if I can get it to, this little wheel right here, I can actually change the color of my beam. So I have a blue one a green one and a red one and then back to your white the other interesting thing about this one is by sliding this switch down is on the middle is off and up is morse code mode so this little button right here allows you to do morse code so I think that that's a really really cool feature on the bottom here I have two different carabiners um, both are black diamond brand and they are both a locking carabiner um, the purple one is the black diamond nitron screw gate beaner uh, and then the gunmetal one is the black diamond uh, positiontron screw gate beaner um, they're both roughly about 50 grams uh, I think, believe this one's 50 and this one's 56. So they're still not super heavy, but they are uh, a little heavier than the other ones I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, I love carabiners. They're extremely functional for strapping stuff, uh, hanging stuff, either from your pack or once you set up your camp from trees and such. Um, 
I will always carry climbing carabiners with me. I will not use those cheap ones. Um, they basically, if I'm going to carry it, I want it to be worth carrying it. If I can't climb with it, why would I carry it? But that's just me. I personally don't want to carry them unless I could potentially use them for climbing. Uh, I have uh, attached on the outside here the Maxpedition Roly Poly pouch. This pouch just basically folds down, opens up, and it's just basically a pouch, right? It's um, great for collecting kindling and stuff while you're walking. Uh, it does have the drawstring up here so you can cinch up the top so that your stuff isn't falling out. And then it just folds and rolls back up when you're finished with it. The Maxpedition stuff is base, it's bulletproof. It's, it's great to deal with. It lasts a really long time and I recommend any of their products. Uh, in this other side pouch here, I have a Silky brand saw. This is the Pocket Boy in the 170 millimeter or 17 centimeter blade length. It is a stainless steel blade. It locks in two different positions for cutting angles. And then folds back up into the handle. Um, it is a wood blade that is on it. I have used it for processing game, uh, so it will cut through bone. The only thing I will say is this handle is not designed um, to basically be used when wet. Um, it's not bad. It's not like it's just going to slip out of your hands. Uh, but be cautious when you're either it's raining and you're processing wood or if you're processing game and it does get some blood on it, it can be a little bit slippery. So I'm just going to flip the bag around here and show you what I have on the straps. So you can see here I've got, uh, this bag does have the water bladder reservoir. So I've just got a platypus water bladder in there. Uh, I do have the cap protector on here to protect the mouthpiece from dirt or debris. And then I have here a small little LED uh, clip light. I have no idea what brand it is, what lumens. I've tried searching it. I can't recall where I got it from. Um, so if anybody knows where to get them, let me know and I'll post it. This is a camp pack uh, towel. I, I sweat a lot when I'm walking or hiking or doing anything physical. So I like the idea of having this microfiber cloth uh, attached to my backpack so that I can wipe my face down when I'm walking. It, it's a, a quick drying. So you can uh, stuff it back in here into the mesh pouch and it will dry. You can also detach it from the uh, little holder here and wash it so you don't have to just leave it um, leave it in there. In my uh, waist belt pockets, I have a small little knife. This is a little Kershaw. It's the 1600 SS. Um, it's just a small little knife. Like, it's not very big at all. Um, I have it in there basically just for really, really quick access. Um, and the other thing I have in here is just some lip chap with some SPF in it. I personally hate having dry or chapped lips. And if you're in a situation where you might not have access to water and you're starting to get dehydrated, your lips are one of the first things that's going to start to dry out. So as a comfort thing, as a morale booster, having lip chap can be a, a really, really good thing. Then in this other pocket here, I have two different kinds of carabiners. I have this one here, which is the Wild Country Helium. This thing is super light. It only weighs 33 grams, um, and it is climbing rated. So you can absolutely climb with this, this thing. It's really, really light. And then the other one I have here is the Black Diamond Hot Wire Carabiner. Uh, this thing weighs 37 grams, so it's a sorry 37 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the helium, but still quite light. Um, and like I said, they're all climbing rated, so these are uh, multifunction, can be used for anything, whether it's um, helping to get someone up a cliff or down a cliff or anything like that. Really, really great thing to have. Uh, so that's what's on the outside of the bags. Bag. So let's um, 
Let's flip it over and take a look on the outside pouches. So the first pouch that I'm going to start with on the outside is this little bucket pouch on the front of the bag. The first thing that I have here is my rain gear. This is just a poncho style, style rain cover. Um, it was, I think I got it for something like eight bucks at Wholesale Sports. And uh, so it, it's cheap. It's not like you can get rain gear that's, you know, $500. Um, this is nowhere near that quality, but it's leaps and bounds above those uh, 99 cent disposable rain ponchos and it is big enough that I can fit it over the backpack while wearing it and it has a hood as well. Uh, these can be used in a pinch for an improvised shelter. Then I have one of these um, basically a really really big handkerchief. Um, they're used in Middle Eastern countries. Chances are uh, anybody who's ever served in the military has one of these. Um, they're great to have. They keep you warm when it's cold out and cool when it's warm out. So they're great to have. That's why I have one of those. And then the other thing I have in here is a merino wool buff. So all a buff is is basically a stretchy tube of material. Um, you can wear it around your neck. You could actually wear it as a tube top, as a shirt. Um, if you ever watched Survivor, those little things that they have or that they wear with their different colors, those are basically a buff and that's what this is. Um, this is merino wool. Specifically, I got it in merino wool because I, um, I got it for hunting season. I actually got this for Christmas, so it was after hunting season, so I didn't have a chance to use it. But I had, I have a blaze orange beanie that doesn't quite come down far enough to cover my ears, uh, which is fine when I'm walking, but once you settle down and you found your little spot that you're going to hunt, it can get a little cold. So I like this because I can pull it over top of, up over top of my ears and uh, part of my chin and my neck and everything, and it keeps me warm. So I'm, that's what I have that. In this front pouch right here, I have my first aid kit and my fire kit. So I'm going to start with the first aid kit. Uh, this is an adventure medical kit. Um, that's what kit it is. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about what is in the kit. Um, I'm only going to talk about what I have added to the kit basically. So there's a couple things that I added. I added a triangular bandage with, sta with safety pins. Um, Tons of uses for a triangular bandage, uh, for slings, for uh, compression bandages, for binding splints uh, to any broken or sprained limbs. Um, they can be used um, as a like a headband. There, there's tons of uses for them. Uh, the other thing I added was a mylar emergency blanket. Now I do have, and you will see shortly, in my shelter kit. I have um, another Mylar blanket, but it's you'll see it's got a plastic coating on it. Uh, these are notorious for ripping and they tear really, really easily. So this is specifically for treating a person with shock uh, in a medical emergency. Burn gel. Just some um, gauze. And then these two things. So these are just two little pill containers. This one has a leave 220 milligrams in it. And this one has ASA 81 milligrams in it. And I have on here, I don't know if it'll zoom, um, the expiry dates, uh, the medication name, and the size. Um, you really need to make sure that you're idiot proofing the stuff that you have. Because if I didn't have this labeled and I went and looked at it a year later, I could completely forget what's in there. It could have expired. So make sure that you're labeling stuff like this, not only so that you know, but if you have to send somebody else into your kit, they know what they're looking for and they can find it. So that's what I have 
in that, or I have added in addition to the first aid kit there. If you have, uh, if you have any questions about what's in the bag, uh, just search for it online. You can find it there. Um, there's tons of reviews on them online. I just wanted to talk about what I added to it. So this is my fire kit. So just hold on a second. Just open it up. So I have here a bunch of the wet fire uh, fire starters. I have a piece of fat wood. I think this was from Light My Fire. I have the Light My Fire Fire Steel. Um, this one has the little emergency whistle thing in it. The one thing I will say about flint and steels is they are great. Like they are wonderful to have. You just need to practice with them. You have to know how to use them. You can't just throw it in your pack never touch it and expect that you're going to be able to start a fire with this. So play around and whenever you start fires, try and start it with that first. Then I have some under other Tinder um, products in here. So this is just some dryer lint and cotton balls. And then here I kind of have a little pack of a bunch of different things. So you have the quick tinders, some tinder sticks, some steel wool, another wet fire, and then some cotton balls. Now this is in here less for me more for someone else. So if I wanted to trade for any sort of item, this is something that's good to have because I have the knowledge and the skills to utilize the other things I have. I could trade this to someone and it might be extremely valuable to them. I also have some jute twine just wrapped around a small popsicle stick for fire starter and then a Bic lighter. Uh, this red and blue stuff is electrical tape. Uh, just wrapped it around there. Tape's always a great thing to have. And then this little zap strap that I have here is to prevent um, it from being depressed and basically leaking gas. So that's why I have it on there. Bics are notorious for, um, for draining and being useless when you need them. And then in here, this is just Um, a waterproof container for some UCO stormproof matches. So I think I have about 30 matches in there and then some cotton batting uh, for kindling as well. Um, this is water, I think it says it's waterproof, but I wouldn't trust it. Um, I would consider it water resistant. Not that it really matters so much with the matches themselves uh, because they are, they are a stormproof match. Uh, and then it also has obviously right there the striker on the outside. So that's what I have in my fire kit. Uh, so let's move on to the top pouch, sorry, the top pocket of the backpack. So moving on to this top pouch right here, um, what I have tucked in here is my uh, headlamp. This is the Petzl Tactica headlamp. Um, great headlamp, water resist or weather and water resistant. Um, great little pack or sorry great little headlamp it's got three different settings high medium low strobe and then the other cool feature about this headlamp is the filter so i slide it over and it goes red white and then red um, it also has a power boost uh, function that makes it extremely bright um, when you just need that little bit of extra light just turn that off. Uh, it also has a little area right here to hold a secondary filter. I have the light diffusing filter attached right now. Um, best for when you're already at your camp, you don't need a beam that goes a long way, but you need kind of a light in a, in a larger area, then that's, that's, that's what that's used for. So uh, for the purpose of this video, I've gone and I've switched all of my batteries um, so that they're they're working. Normally I always have them stored um, in the devices uh, backwards so that there's no risk of it getting turned on and draining your battery. Um, toilet paper, great thing to have, uh, invaluable when you're out in the bush. Um, necessary, not really, um, but it will make your life so much easier. It's a morale booster, it'll help keep you going. <clears throat> Uh, filter straw in here. Um, this thing is great. It uh, can filter up to 50 gallons of water. Um, it's the Frontier Pro model. Um, I would ideally like to get a pump 
water filter. Uh, they can filter more water, but they are a little bit bigger, they're a little bit heavier, and they are quite a bit more expensive. So that's one of those items that's on the list to get but hasn't been acquired yet. So this is what I have in the interim. So the other last three items that I have, oh, sorry, the other items I have in this pocket are, uh, this is the Sabre Survival Pocket Chainsaw. Um, it's one of the better ones out there. It's far more like a regular chainsaw chain than some of the other ones, which are just flat pieces of metal. Uh, they're more prone to breaking. This one works really, really well. And you can cut through larger diameter uh, trees with this than you can with my silky saw. Uh, but the silky saw is a little bit easier if you're processing branches off of um, some deadfall or stuff. The, the silky saw is better for that, but this is better for your, your big honking trees. The other thing I have is a stainless steel collapsible trowel. Um, I don't have one of the tri-folding and trenching shovels or anything like that. They're a lot heavier and um, I personally don't see the need for it. Uh, this works fine. It's heavy duty. You can pound into all different types of soil with this, rocky or whatnot. Um, this flat area here is great if you're using a small piece of wood to actually help drive it into the ground. It's great. It's collapsible. Really, really good quality. Um, so this is what I have for my, uh, my digging tool, basically. Uh, this is my Maxpedition Fatty. I'm not even going to open it. I'm going to be doing a separate video for you guys. So if you want to know what's in here, check that out. Um, the last things I have in here are two decks of cards. I have a wilderness survival deck and an urban survival deck. Regular set of 52 playing cards, um, but they each have little survival tips on it, whether it's for an urban environment or a wilderness environment. Uh, great for combating boredom, helping relieve stress, making it so that you can calm down and keep your head in a situation like that. Playing cards are often recommended for a survival uh, bag, so that's why I have those in here. The other thing I have here is my fishing kit. It's just secured with a ranger band. And then inside I have, um, so this, this was from survivalresources.com. Uh, um, its purpose is, is I would like to fill it at some point with power bait. Now I can't take credit for this idea. I saw it on somebody else's YouTube post and unfortunately I can't recall who it was. If I do figure it out, I will uh, link that video um, in my uh, about section so that you guys can check it out. So I won't take credit for that. Um, I have some snare wire, um, some thick or tarred line. Um, I believe this is 15 pound test fishing line. Some floaters, some sinkers, and um, now, now I'll be honest with you here, I'm not much uh, of a fisher. So this kit is kind of just what I've thrown together from what I had. Um, that's not to say it's completely comprehensive or anything like that. And I really would appreciate your guys' input on what I should have uh, in this kind of kit. So that's that. So that's all that's in the top par part of this um, bag. So I'm going to open up into the main compartment and go through what's in there. So the first part that I'm going to talk about is this little mesh pocket right here. What I have in here is some 98% DEET bug spray, a Santo Ranger compass. Um, now this compass is in degrees. I personally would love to find one that's in mills. It's what I was taught on, it's what I understand, uh, but I can't find one. So if anybody knows where I can find this compass or a similar style of compass in mills, let me know. Um, the other thing I have in here is this orange bandana that I believe this is also from survivalresources.com. It has a bunch of stuff on it. It's kind of just more for fun than anything else. Um, if you do need to be seen, the orange will make that a little bit easier. Um, but it's got a bunch of different animal tracks on it, some different knots all sorts of stuff like that. So it's kind of just 
uh, an interesting little thing to have uh, dual purpose so it has that information on it but then it also is orange um, if you actually are trying to be seen in that situation so this first little pack right here I like to keep my stuff organized um, and try and keep it all in its own uh, little section uh, that's just me you can do it however you want I just prefer them having its own little modular system uh, so I have a towel in here it really is quite a large towel um, not necessary for you know a bug out situation or whatever but I like the thought of being able to cut it down if necessary like if I needed to use it for uh, gauze for a bandage or anything like that or if I wanted to trade it to somebody else then I know that I have that ability without, you know, leaving myself wanting. This is basically my personal hygiene pouch. I have two packages of these uh, Adventure Medical Kit bath wipes, basically. Biodegradable, antibacterial. Um, personal hygiene is a really, really big concern when you're in a survival situation. If you have poor personal hygiene, it can lead to you getting diseases and getting sick and basically making yourself weaker and more susceptible to, um, to death. Uh, these are just some moist wipes. If you don't need to bust out a whole wipe for a towel or for a bath and you just want to do your face and hands and stuff, you can do it with that. These are um, easy towels. They are a disposable one-time use towel that's been compacted down into these little tablets. Just add water and then they'll unfold. A uh, little razor blade with some electrical tape around the blade uh, just to prevent it from puncturing anything. Pocket soap. These little uh, sho soap sheets. Um, they're great. Um, they can be used for clothing, for washing dishes, for hair, anything like that. And they're they're just these little these little sheets. So I like those. They're good to have, and then they're easy to give away if you wanted to let Buddy borrow some soap. Toothpaste. Uh, now my plan is in the near future to actually make toothpaste dots. Um, it's basically where you take the toothpaste, you do a bunch of little dots that look like chocolate chips, you let them dry out, and then they weigh less and take up less space, and then you just basically chew them up with a little bit of water when you're out in the bush, and you use that instead of this kind of toothpaste. Uh, the, other th the last thing I have in here is my water purification tablets. Um, these are the ones that are iodine free. So they don't have the bad aftertaste. Uh, so these ones do protect against your bacteria, viruses, and uh, Giardia. I think that's how you say it. Um, check for your local area. Some areas have water that's prone to different um, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and stuff like that. And not all water purification tablets will kill all things. So make sure you have one that's good for the area that you're planning on bugging out to or surviving in. Uh, the next pack that I'm going to talk about here is um, my shelter system. Now, my shelter system is in its early phases right now. Um, it's not where I want it to be, but it is just what I'm working with now. Uh, at the top here, I have two different hanks of cordage. This is actually a bungee cord. So let's see if I can get it to... So it's actually a stretchy, stretchy cord. Um... And then I have just your regular 550 paracord. Uh, this is the camo pattern of olive and black. But then this white line in here is a tracer of the reflective material. So it's great for your guidelines and stuff around camp because uh, when you've got your headlight on, they'll stand out and you can see it and not trip over them. But it's not like it's orange where it could be seen from a distance and potentially give away your position. So this is the emergency blanket that I was talking about before that has the plastic coating on it. Um, it's a lot better for durability. Um, they don't rip as easily. They won't fall apart as easily. This is the two-person one. Um, it's not that much bigger than the one-person one. So for a little, um, 
like folded up it's not that much bigger so i got it to either potentially be used with another person if you're sharing body heat you're going to be a lot warmer but then it can also be used to increase the size of your shelter as well The other thing I have in here is the Soul Emergency Bivy. So it's basically like a mummy sleeping bag, but made out of a similar material to this. Um, what I want to have eventually is the Hennessy Hammock. I personally believe that if you can sleep off the ground, it's better than sleeping on the ground. Um, the only situation that I would say it's better to sleep on the ground is if you have more than one person and you guys can, and, and you can share the same tent and share body heat and, and stay warmer at night. Um, but I personally would like to have the Hennessy hammock for myself. Um, this is a space blanket. I got this from Amazon.com. It's um, basically a tarp with the reflective uh, material on the inside. It's got grommets and everything, um, so you can use this to make an A-frame shelter. Um, I like this system. It works well for three seasons. It's not great in the winter at all, um, but that's something that uh, I can't fit a sleeping bag into this bag right now. So once I get the bag I want, I hope to include uh, a sleeping bag in my hammock with my shelter system. Uh, so I've got one other section that we're going to talk about next, and that's my cook kit.